please help me welcome on John Ramirez. Hold on Bless one you. second. Brother. How are you doing, brother? I'm good. Thank you again. Thank you All again. All right, man, two. we're back. The devil's a liar. We know he doesn't want what God is going to do to happen tonight. We're going to keep pushing right through. We are spiritual warriors. We're spiritual snipers. Um, I wanted you to go ahead and just, you know, give them an overview again of your testimony. For those that were watching, it was getting so good. And then it reset. So, um, yeah, just go for it. We're going to roll again as if we didn't start before. And we're just going to give the devil a black eye tonight. And man, and man, you know, my, my, my life was sold about 25 years into the demonic satanic world. 25 years. I was not a satanic person that would dress in black with the little white and black nails. And I, I was in the hierarchies of the demonic kingdom of the demonic documents from the age of eight to the age of 35. Actually, I, I came from a bloodline of warlock and witches from my father's side. And uh, I was in demon church from the age of eight to the age of 35, going to demon church consistently from five from seven in the evening to five in the morning. I got married on Halloween. I had a demonic wedding on Halloween. It was a ritual of killing animals, drinking the blood, making blood contracts. I so so I you know it's a funny because I've spoken to people that have been out of the occult and I celebrate them for being out of the occult and I ask questions about how deep did you go? What you do in the occult? Did you do human sacrifices? Did you cut yourself, drink your blood? Do you have human bones in your house? They're like, oh no, we never done that. I think the far as we done, kill a squirrel. Wow. I'm like, I'm like, but then what kind of demonic contract you have with the demonic tie or the demons? I had, I had marine spirits. I had to dress in white for 365 days plus seven wow. because I had a big contract with one of the most, but most diabolical marine spirits, Jemaya which is in the Jehovah religion, it goes back down to Africa, the, back down to slavery, 1500. I had, a, I, had a, I had a contract before I left the kingdom of darkness. I had a contract called Sansi. Sansi is a Haitian contract, which has to do with the ice bucket challenge. When people are doing the ice bucket challenge, I had to do with that contract. I had all the contracts in the demonic side from the age of, from the age of eight years old to the age of 35, which is 25 years. I ran out of contracts to do. There was no more contracts to do. There was no more covenants to do. I did them all. I did them all from, I had nine cemeteries in my house. I had human bones in my house. I will ask to project more than any demonic person in the planet. I had contract with marine spirit, demonic spirit. I had contract, I got, not only that, I had to dedicate my daughter to the demonic side because they, they told me if I don't dedicate it, the devil said, he'll kill my daughter. So I gave my daughter at the age of 11, I, I gave her over to the demonic side. So, so it went on and on and on. And the only, way I, the only way I'm talking to you, to my precious brother today, is because in 1999, Jesus Christ knew my address and he took me out of my body and sent me to hell. And when I went to hell, when I went to hell, uh, the devil showed up in hell. The devil said, I love you, my son. I gave you everything that you wanted from the age of eight to the age of 35. My father was a warlock. My aunt was a witch. Uh, I came from a bloodline from Puerto Rico. I, then my contract was from Haiti, Cuba, Miami, and New York City. So in the realms of, of the demonic, I sit with the devil, talk to him all night long. I had, nine, I had dirt from nine cemeteries. I had dirt from jails. I had dirt from mental hospitals. So when I do witchcraft to you, I use these ingredients and put it on you so I can, I can use it, send you to this location, either send you to jail. To witchcraft, send you to the cemetery to witchcraft. I had dirt from nine seven, from nine hospitals, so I can do witchcraft to you, so they can do unnecessary operations, so you can die in the operating room. One time, I got, I had beef with these Jamaican people. They knew high level witchcraft. I completely demolished these people. Even the landlord lady that was renting the apartment for me, I, I hit her so hard with witchcraft. She never came to collect the rent because. Uh, I lived there one year and rent free one year. I never came back because she lost her mind. She didn't know how to get back with the address. I was so demonic, diabolical. I, I had a head-on collision with Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm on your show today. Because Jesus Christ took me to hell, brought me back. And my testimony is on YouTube. I'm just giving you a power phrase of what God had done in my life. And that's why I, I know how to fight the spiritual warfare from the components of the side of the devil's playbook. That's why when I do e-courses and I write books, I'm not writing book from the, from the side of the church. I'm mm -hmm. writing book from the devil's camp to teach you how you can dismantle and disarm the enemy at any given point in your walk with God. And I also teach you that the devil has power, but he has no authority over you. 
mm-hmm. and how you can exercise your power and your authority through the Holy Spirit and break and destroy, dismantle, and curse to the root every demonic stronghold, generation of curse in your family, every demonic attack over your life. How easily the spiritual warfare and the tactics of how we know how to fight the good fight, you can have a free life in Jesus Christ. Amen. So, my life is all about taking it to the devil on the front lines. Amen. And God has saved me for time as this. I believe that in my heart. And I believe in my heart, God has saved you for time as this. Because there's not many spiritual warfare people out there. Mm. That's for sure. Many people are living on the love boat. But we live in the battleship. Amen. Come so on. it's a big difference. So bottom line, I came back from hell, went into my body in 1999, and then been serving Jesus Christ ever since. And confronted witches and warlocks. I confronted people actually projecting to my house. And I should project into my dreams and uh, I haven't been good for them, but it's been awesome for me and my journey with the Lord. Amen. So good. And you know, when I hear your testimony, I think about some of those watching that say, God can't save my kid. God can't save my husband. God can't save my wife. They're too bad. Listen, guys, if God can take John Ramirez, who is out there, which I talked to when I was in New York preaching, I talked to one of your cousins that goes to the church I was preaching at, and he said, bro, Everything John Romero says, he said, was is 100% true. He said they used to be, he was telling me how he was a little boy and used to come over and they would take all the kids and put them in the back room because they, they didn't want no one around you because your family was so afraid of you for what you were doing. And he was telling me like, man, the way we were talking about the way God has transformed you, the way God has renewed you and the way God has raised you up. And I'm telling you, I'm prophesying over someone in the chat. The days of playing church are over. The days of patty cake, as you just said, Mickey Mouse are over. God is raising up. Up a last day remnant God is raising up an end time army God is raising up spiritual snipers spiritual warriors come on spiritual gangsters in these uh-huh. last days and so guys listen when he's telling you this stuff he's not talking about it to glorify the enemy or glorify darkness he's exposing the works of darkness mm-hmm. he's exposing mm-hmm. the plans of the enemy and we have all these pastors and preachers and leaders that know nothing about warfare nothing about the enemy's kingdom nothing about taking territory that are telling us you guys shouldn't talk about spiritual warfare. You guys shouldn't talk about battle. And what army in the world says don't talk about battle? What army in the world says don't talk about warfare? Friend, we are the army of Almighty God. We are the kingdom of God. And it's time as the church that we put down the pacifier and pick up the sword and start going to battle. Because what we're seeing, you know, John, I wanted you to share a little bit about what you're seeing in your travels. But what I'm seeing is a deliverance revival. I'm seeing a revival of deliverance. We're seeing demons cast out everywhere we go we're seeing the devil's kingdom destroyed and we're not asking religious people's permission we're not asking what the religious world thinks we are going and taking territory now i know you've been seeing man and you're traveling you're preaching lots of deliverance lots of breakthrough just share some of the stuff that god's been showing you some of the stuff maybe you've been seeing in your travels i know there's been a major hunger for deliverance right now in these last days Hey man, you know, one one thing I say, you know, there's people out there that they, they, you see, you have to read, you have to discern who, who who's in the battlefield, who knows mm. the spiritual warfare, who knows the tactics of the enemy. You see, God has equipped us to know the tactics of the enemy to destroy, destroy, dismantle, uproot, and curse to the root. Every demonic stronghold, every demonic attack, every demonic frequency, every demonic territory, every demonic atmosphere. We are able to take that back in the name of Jesus Christ. But we got pastors out there. We got leaders out there that in general, in the church at large, they're talking about the enemy. See, you could talk about the enemy. That doesn't tell me, you know, spiritual warfare. You're just a good Mm. talker. You're just a good talker. You see, spiritual warfare is like people like you and me when God sends us to the battlefield. People that know how to confront the enemy. People know they know how to set the captives free. You see, you could talk about the devil all day long. And that, that, that don't make your spiritual warfare person to put pastors out there. What makes your spiritual when you confront the enemy and you set the captives free. That's what makes your spiritual warfare person. That's what makes your special op. That's what makes you armed and dangerous in the kingdom of Jesus Christ against the enemy. So pastors will use this whole metaphor thing, the theology, oh, you just are giving the devil too much glory. You just glorify. No, no, you need to shut your mouth, sit down. We exposing the enemy for who he is, and we bringing the fight to the devil because we're not afraid. Mm. Because, you see, we've seen too much in Jesus to doubt. But the pastors, they talk the game, they talk the game, just because you talk doesn't make a spiritual warfare person. 
Wow, that's so good. You know, we had over a thousand questions come in tonight for you, John. So many things people wanted to ask you. I've narrowed them down into categories. A lot of them, <laughs> I, I would want to say over 200 came in asking about the Travis Scott situation, the concert where 10 people died. I know you're not fully, fully aware of Travis Scott and everything that went on. I was We were talking beforehand, but basically, in my opinion, John, it was a human sacrifice ritual um, mm -hmm. just to get catch up to speed. It was a concert they had going and there was a portal and literally like it looked like hell on stage. People said they felt demons coming into them. People couldn't breathe. Eight people died that night. Two more have died since then. Over 300 people hospitalized. Like his shirt literally had people going from death to going into hell. Um, the stage was set up as a portal. It had like a phoenix on fire. All this demonic symbolism as dead bodies were being literally crowd surfed out of the crowd. He was singing songs over them saying, yeah. He was saying like, you guys know what you came for. As people were dying on stage, it was flashing see you on the other side. So there was, it was blatant blatantly demonic it was blatantly it wasn't like hidden mm -hmm. it wasn't like conspiracy it was blatantly demonic talk to me about this was this a human ritual was this a human sacrifice ceremony how does music play into that witchcraft world that satanic realm um to your knowledge coming out of that what round what like role does music and stuff play into that well, well, you got to know when, when, when we go to church, we worship, we get into the spirit, right? When we worship, we get into the spirit, we worship, we, we, we usher the presence of God into our worship, into our midst, mm -hmm. right? We, 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 we invite the Holy Spirit to come into our midst. We invite the Holy Spirit to come into the presence, you know, so we can enjoy the, the, the intimacy with Christ, right? So on the opposite side of the demonic, the music it, it hypnotizes. It, 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 it brings it, it brings an atmosphere of the demonic. So the, the portal that was up the gates and portals of demons coming back and forth, looking for the human sacrifice, looking for the tragedy to happen so they can sacrifice. And this man knew what was, what was going on because when I was in the demonic world, the demons would tell me, well, if you don't do this with your daughter, we're going to take her out. So that we, I, there was things that I had to do in the, in the demonic world in order to please the devil to keep the rhythm going, to keep my contract going. So this man knew what he was doing. He knew the setup. He knew the stage. He knew the platform. He knew what he was doing. He knew the demons was going to come in and out of that portal. He knew the demons were coming in because they, they had to come and collect life. You know, they need to collect life. That was a sacrifice of them collecting the life or whatever the case may be. So they came in, they, they, their whole stage was prepared in the spirit, the demonic spirit mm. round in order for this tragedy to happen. So because he, the demons, the devil told him, if you don't perform this situation tonight, then you would die, your family would die and there will be the sacrifice. So either you die or your family die or other people would die. So he knew what he had to set up. He knew how to set up the stage, the, the gateways and portals for the demon to come and collect the human sacrifice. Wow. Now, is this as far as when it comes to like animal sacrifice, human sacrifice, is this for him to climb the ranks? Is this for him to gain favor in the demonic no, this realm? Is, this is this is for him to get this is for him to finish the contract that he started mm. because at every demonic con every demonic round, every demonic round has a new has a contract and has an expiration date. You see, so you have to keep the contract and keep the expiration date and you have to stay on track. You have to stay on track. So whatever you sign that contract with, for whatever time you sign that contract, you have to give the devil every up everything that he agreed. You came in agreement with him on that contract. Now after the contract is expired, now you have to sign a new contract because there's new levels that you have to go into and new sacrifices and new uh, more ex expanding yourself to the enemy, having showing more allegiance to the devil because we don't sell the soul to the devil, by the way. There are people say, I sold my soul to the devil. No, you sold your allegiance to the devil. Mm, you sold time to the devil it. because your soul, your soul, the title of your soul, Jesus Christ owns the title of your vehicle. He owns the title of your soul. So the point of a man die is the judgment absent from the body, presence of the Lord, not present to the devil. But you sow your allegiance and your right, you're given birth rights, you sow your allegiance to the devil, so you could serve him all the days of your life, like I did. That's what I did. But you know, thank God for Jesus in 1999. That was a good year for me. He showed up and set me free. And man, he canceled that contract. And man, so every contract that you make with the devil, the higher you go, a new contract. The more, the more the music, the more your music goes higher, the higher the contract, the higher the, everything is at stake higher, higher sacrificial things you have to do, higher uh, things that you, you have to gamble with, higher opportunities you have to, the devil wants from you, the devil wants to stretch you when he brings you higher because he wants more from you because he's giving you more. Wow. Now, so 
as far as when people always say, I sold my soul because there's another, I'm going to make a video this weekend about it. Another celebrity said they just met with a demon and they sold their soul to him. Now, when demons are coming to people or the devil, but I think for most people, it's probably demons and telling the person, You're, if you sell me your soul, I'll give you this. Now, we know you can't sell your soul because it doesn't belong to you, it belongs to God, but are they, are they, are the demons convincing these celebrities that they're actually mm -hmm. sold their soul? Yeah, to yeah, get yeah. Them, I mean, like, I can never leave this to convince them yeah, that they can never exactly. be free, saved, never be free. Because I think a lot exactly. of these celebrities want to get saved, but then some of them are like, I'm too far gone because I sold my soul to Satan. When in reality, the devils deceive them into thinking they own their soul. They, that right. he owns and, their soul. One thousand percent. Because you see, with truth, the Bible says, redeem your time, the days are evil. So you're selling your time to the devil. Second like mm. timeshare, you're selling your time to the devil. So, so, so the devil makes you believe that you sell your soul because he makes you believe once you sell it, you can't get it back. See, wow. so that's the great deception. You know, the great deception, the devil makes you believe that you can't get back your soul. So now you're indebted to the devil until the day you die or the day he he takes you out because the devil understands one thing that he ha he has an expiration date on you as long as he can't use you because after he's done with you he can't use you anymore he's taking you out you see the people in hollywood they die of stuff that we don't have All the never time. you know they die on on, on they, they they premature death devils up in the hollywood's hills killing these people either alcohol drugs whatever the case may be even the guy from batman the guy that did batman the guy that did the joker remember the whole joker yeah, thing yeah he's ledger he his life, his life was cut short. Why? Because his contract expired, and he didn't want to go. To, he didn't want to go to the high level. He had a daughter. He had a daughter that the devil wanted. And he couldn't give her the daughter. He didn't want to give the daughter. So the devil said, "So you have to die." So he took the place. Wow. And you know, you see a lot of these rappers that have died, these big name rappers that will die. Mm -hmm. Either someone come up and shoot them and they're always, they always have a hit on them. And I'm thinking, how are these celebrities or they'll die? One guy I think died of a seizure recently who was a big time rapper. And uh, so these people, you'd say a lot of them, we think, oh, it's just a natural death or somebody, but these are actually demonic contracts being put on them yeah, because the devil's pretty at, much done with Tupac, them. You look at Tupac Shakur, right? And I, and I was, when I was in the world, I was a big fan of Tupac Shakur. I was a big fan of Tupac Shakur when I was in the devil worshiping game. You know, I, 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 I was very intrigued by his music. And uh, you see Biggie Smalls. How could two people in six months apart die the same exact way? Mm. And, there was no, and there was never, ever evidence of who did it or anyone paid for the crime that they did. Because the devil knew how to cover the tracks. Wow. Wow, man. It's much deeper than I think people realize. I'm going to go into some of these questions, John. I'm going to shoot them at you and then we'll roll with it here. Um, first question was, when John was in Santeria, was he aware that he was worshiping the devil? Did Satan appear in disguise or was it the devil as, him tr as his true self when you were when you were a devil worshiper? Well, when I was a devil worshiper, Santeria, I mean, the worship of the saints, that's what they call it, but it's worship of demons and the mm -hmm. devil. That's what they call it. Santeria means the worship of saints. I mean, not the worship of saints, worship of demons and the hierarchy to the, all the way to the devil. So basically, you know that we, where were you at because when you go to Santeria parties and people get demon possessed, you see something that not even Hollywood can make a movie out of this. That's how uh, that's how demon possessed people get in Santeria, and then they have to take them to a room and do a ceremony that they can remove the principality. Because the Santeria has to do with principalities only, because they shave your head. See, they shave your head in Santeria. When they shave your head in Santeria, they do these demonic symbols on your head. They did it to me. So when the, the principality comes down, he comes down into into the, into the center of your hand, takes over your body, and your body can't even resist the the, the power of that demon that's coming down. Now, now, when you do spiritualism and you do like uh, demon church and you do spiritualism, the demons come from the ground up. So you, when you go to demon church, you can't wear your shoes because the demon have to have entry through your feet. Wow. So, so Santeria, I, do you, people know that they're worshiping devil. They just can't say nothing because if you, if you say something, you expose, if you expose yourself or you expose the, the contract, you expose what, what you're involved with, the devil wants you to play Nice. The devil wants you to recruit people. The devil wants you to introduce people to the Santeria, spiritualism, tower car reading. The devil wants you because you have to recruit people. You mandatory have to recruit people to the dark side. So the devil, if you say anything out of out of the realms of what you're supposed to say, the devil will take you out. Wow. And so when he was meet, when you were meeting with him, was it always the same or was he disguised himself? Was he different oh, looking? Different, or was differently, always different, different, different facets of the devil, different facets, depending on the night you met with him, depending on the contract, depending on the opportunity, depending on the assignment or the mission he had for you. My mission was to go out of clubs and look for Christians.
Mm-hmm. That was my mission to go out to clubs and look for Christian because the Christians are hanging out in the clubs and they were the gateway mouth gate ear gate was going crazy for them because I one time I remember I met a Christian he said well I I, I just come here I drink Paul I drink Paul Spring water I said what do you do with the music they are going into your ears I said what do you do with your eyes that the girls are walking half naked what do you do with those. So you're opening gateways, gateways and portals in your spirit, and the devil already got you, and you don't even know it. Wow, wow, man, that's deep. Um, here's here's the next one. How are witches and warlocks affected when their spells and curses are broken or backfire them? Can a spell backfire on a witch or warlock when they try to attack true believers? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, how many times? You know how many times? You know how many time a demonic, uh, the warlock, wizard, root workers, whatever they want to call themselves, put witchcraft on me. I send it back to the sender. I send it back with the authority of the Holy Spirit. Burns out the, burn the altars down. Even physically, the altars had caught on fire, or even even they have they have hit. They got hit so hard by their own witchcraft that they had lost their minds because you know it's a spiritual warfare fight. And 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 and, and whatever true, a true believer, you know, the, the devil can hit you with something because the devil has power. But a true believer, he has no authority over you, so he can't control you and manipulate you. There's no authority over you. Look at Job. What God, what did the Lord say? You can do this, you can do that to Job, but you have no authority to take his life. Mm. So there's a limit so, to what they can try to do. There's a limit what they can do. But you know, again, we have to fight back. They hit, we hit back. I mean, we love the person. We want the person to get saved, but I got to let that person know that my arson is way bigger than yours, baby. So you better check yourself before you send something in my house. Mm, come on, somebody. I love it. Um, <laughs> and here's another one. I've seen people speak in tongues when a demon's being cast out. How can you tell the difference between a demonic tongue and a tongue from the Holy Spirit? Well, the Holy you Spirit talked about is, demonic is, tongues before. You've talked about yeah, you used to speak in that. demonic tongues. I was I was I was with Kevin Zeta and I was doing ministry over there and this lady came to, I prayed for this lady in the altar she was speaking in demonic tongues you could feel it in your spirit Holy Spirit discern tell you that's not me that's not me speaking and one thing you got to tell believers man believers I got you know one thing I want to share when you're in the battlefield and you're casting out a devil you know demonic speaking in tongues and have uh, having language is to reinforce your inner man to because you want your inner man to be strong but you don't know how long the fight is going to be with you and casting out that devil I was in Arizona. I was casting out the devil from this lady, this one girl. It took one hour to cast out that devil. I spoke in tongues a few times to reinforce my inner man, to stay in the fight, to stay in the rhythm, to cast out that devil. There was a bishop there. He 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 put his hands out. He said, "I cast you out in the name of Jesus." You know what the demon told him? This is a principality. You know what the principality said? You weak. You shut your mouth. You can't do nothing. Tell him just like that in front of everybody. You weak. Shut your mouth. You can't do nothing. When I went over to pray. You know what the principality said? I waited 20 years to fight you. Wow. Whoa. I waited 20. I got the video. I can send you the video. You can put it up. The demon said, I waited 20 years to confront you, John Ramirez, because you used to work for us. Now I'm here to confront you. Wow. Wow. Yeah, they definitely so that, recognize. Mm-hmm. They recognize. I mean, you know, they, they understand that I used to work for them. I, you know, I was, uh, I was an evangelist to the dark side. For twenty for twenty five years, I recruited so many people to the dark side. I recruited people to the dark side by introducing them to culture. Demons love culture. Demons love fashion. Demons love uh, people. Love Tarik Curry. People love that whole mystical. Tell me my future. You know, a, a Ouija boy. Or uh, tell me my Tarik card, my tea leaves. You know, read my palm, read my hand. People love that kind of stuff because it intrigue and whatever intrigues you will entrap you. Wow, man, we got 6,500 people on already. This is amazing. I'm glad we're getting everybody back here. This is awesome. Um, And I want to say something about demonic tongues as well. When I'm praying deliverance over people, I always tell people, do not pray in tongues because I'm trying to get the demon out of your mouth and you're praying Uh in the Holy Spirit and you're blocking Uh the front door of the house. You know, if the mouth, if the eyes are the window, the mouth is the front door of the, of the, of the spiritual house, then we're trying to drive the demons out. So if you're trying to listen, if you're trying to get deliverance and everyone in the chat, listen, and you're speaking in tongues all crazy, don't expect a demon to come out of the same door where the Holy Ghost is speaking out and you're praying in tongues So I tell people don't pray in tongues while I'm casting demons out of you um, I, I might pray in tongues, but I tell them don't pray in tongues And then if you're speaking in a demonic tongue for those of you that asked this question I think as you said John is very clear What's a demonic tongue and where and what tongue is the Holy Spirit? But just and I, dirt. It don't have the demonic tongue to have no peace and mm. it just no peace in the demonic tongue. It sounds dirty. It sounds filthy. It yes. sounds heavy. It sounds ugly. It doesn't have the heavenly peace, joy, and the Holy Spirit. When you when we speak in tongue, you can feel my spirit bear witness to speaking yes. in tongue. 
there's an edification that comes on when the person speaks in tongue. I mean, I was with Kevin Zeta and his wife, Kathy. I don't. I never heard no one speak in tongues like she does. I mean, this woman has such a, an angelical gift in speaking in tongues. You can feel it in your spirit. It, it just it just edifies your spirit when you you hear her speaking in tongues. And I say this because when you when a per, when a demon when a person pretends a mimic spirit, that's what I call a mimic spirit, trying to speak in tongue and confuse the person in front of him, and you think that it's the Holy Spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit. It's the angel of light speaking in tongues. And you can hear the heaviness. You can hear the heaviness. You can you can hear the hollow behind that speaking in tongue. And you know it's not the Holy Spirit because your spirit has a check. You feel like a like something what's coming out of that person is contaminated. Mm, that's really good, really good stuff. Here's the next one. How can you identify if someone in your life is using witchcraft against you? You see, this is what I tell people. I have such a deep relationship with the Holy Spirit. Come on, understand. My the Holy Spirit tells me, even when people are trying to do witchcraft to me, where it's coming from, who's doing it, what they're trying to do, what they're trying to get accomplished. Because it's the Holy Spirit that, that tells you, Holy Spirit, I don't give, I don't care if the devil standing in my blind spot. Holy Spirit will tell me the devil standing in my blind spot because it's just that incredible discernment that God put over your life that you understand the things of the Spirit. You know, this is you. You can read all the books in the world. I have amazing. I have written amazing books, but it, it is your relationship with the Holy Spirit that would that it, he is your alarm. He is your protector. He is your mm. he is your shield. He he's the one that that warns you. He is your warning sign that tells you what's coming your way, who's doing it, why they're doing it, what kind of witchcraft they're doing, how to dismantle it, how to curse it, how to send it back to that witch so she could be tormented so she come to repentance. Wow, so good. I want to say, guys, we have over 5,000 just on YouTube. So everybody on YouTube right now, like the broadcast because we have 2,000 likes, 5,000 uh, viewers. Make sure you guys hit like on there. And we're about to break 7,000 live, which is absolutely incredible. Um, here's the next question. Someone said, um, I have had several fam family members die in freak accidents. It's abnormal. Is it possible a spell could actually kill someone via a freak car accident or a freak accident? Oh, absolutely, man. I did, you know, tell me I did witchcraft on people and, and that caused car accidents on people. And I don't say that to boast. I don't say that. I mean, I regret all the witchcraft I did. But, you know, I told God, God told me my, my, my demonic sins back in BC before Christ is under the blood. So there's no reason for me to feel mm. guilty of the things that I did because and then you're going to have to bring Paul. Paul is a murderer. Paul killed Christians. You know, you're going to have to bring him to trial. You know, Peter was Peter was the denier. You have to bring him to trial. You know, and, and you have to bring, you know, you're just saying, uh, yes, witchcraft, witchcraft works. Only It works on the people that leave open doors and gateways and portal and give the devil legal rights. Witchcraft will work upon you. You could be a lukewarm Christian. Christian witchcraft is going to work on you, too. God can have merciful and protect you to a certain extent to, to, to wake you up. But the bottom line is, you know, witchcraft, I did witchcraft on people, put them in hospital. I did witchcraft on people, put them in ICU. I did witchcraft on people and put them in mental wards, took their mind because I knew how to steal the personality and steal the character to witchcraft, things that I did in the, in the demonic realm. I did witchcraft to people that got unnecessary surgeries, witchcraft to people that got into some crazy accidents, you know. I remember one time the lady paid me $20,000. She was going to jail. She was, work, she was working for uh, Foot Locker. And she stole twenty thousand dollars worth of sneakers and Foot Locker, and they was going to put her in jail. I did witchcraft to the lawyers, and they crashed their car. They got they ended up in the hospital. I did witchcraft on uh, on, on the lawyer team of, from from Foot Locker. They couldn't show up to court. They was uh, against each other. And then the I did I, I did witchcraft on the judge to give favor to the girl. The girl never went to jail, but she her, her life was incarcerated in the demonic world for the rest of her life. Wow. Wow, she ended up paying back for everything that happened. Right. She, you know, in the natural, she was free, but in the spirit, she was incarcerated. Wow. Let me ask you this, John. This is a big question people always have. I've had this question. I've preached about this many times before. I think that the church's idea of what we're talking about tonight, they think that Satan is some far off being that doesn't really care about what's going on, D detached. We could just ignore him. If we ignore him, he'll ignore us. The target of Satan. Am I wrong? Is it not believers? Because in my mind, people think that Satan doesn't care about believers. He only wants to target the world. But in my mind, I'm thinking Satan already owns the people in the world. Wouldn't Satan's mm -hmm. target be 
Christians? Wouldn't Satan's target be the church? Talk to me about um, how much of Satan's goal is to attack the Christian, to get the Christian off guard, to make sure the Christian backslides or or turns from God. Um, was that a big goal of yours or the satanic world that you were in? Was it to attack Christians or was it just go get people in the world? Yeah, I mean, my, my, my goal was, you know, kill, steal, and destroy people in the world, but my trophy case were Christians. Mm. My trophy case, if I got a Christian, turn them from, from the cross, turn them to the dark side, or recruit them to the dark side, or pull witchcraft on him, and destroy his purpose and his destiny, that was a trophy in my trophy in my case. You know, because, I mean, the devil's trophies are Christians. The devil doesn't, he ain't worried about no Buddha trophy, he ain't worried about no Muhammad trophy. They, they're cult people, man. They, they, they in the bed with the devil in a whole different facet. He, the devil is chasing true believers. What would you, what would you say? You see, Anton Lavey, right? Anton Lavey was the person, the founder of the Church of Satan. You know, we know, we know Madeline Manson, supposed to be one of the elders. I, I heard he got saved, but you know, we, we gotta have lunch and let me check out the fruit of the spirit. Come on, we come got, on. You know, <laughs> because everybody's mother's Christian today. Yep. Everybody's mother's a Christian, but they look like a fig tree. Jesus cursed them because from close, from far, they look like Christian, but from close, they don't have no fruit. Mm. You know, so 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 my 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 whole situation is the devil is after believers because the devil knows if he can steal your purpose, your destiny, you ain't going nowhere. And his trophy case is full of believers. Look at Carson Pilsen. I mean, what an amazing man of God. You know, he's preaching the gospel. That everybody's included. The devil got that. The devil got home in the trophy case, and this guy did Azusa streets. You know. You have many people, Eddie Long, you saw Eddie Long, the life of Eddie Long, and we say this with a broken heart. Eddie Long had an amazing church in, in Atlanta, Georgia. 25,000 people, wrote books and everything, but the devil got him too. He's on his trophy case. You see? So so, so, so the devil's after Christians, man. And why would Anton LaVey say this? He, he, he's the founder of the church of saying, and he would say, I want to thank every Christian parent they allow their children to celebrate the devil one time a year. Why, why he don't say that about Buddha? He don't say that about Muhammad? Why would he don't say that about Jehovah's Witness or Catholics? Why would he say that about Christian? Because the devil wants true Christians in his trophy case. Mm, wow. Here's a good one that I got asked a bunch of times. Do Satanists or people that worship Satan know or believe in the reality of hell? And do they actually want to go to hell? So, I mean, I've, no, they I've don't thought believe this before. They don't believe there's hell then. No, they don't believe in that. I, I thought, you know, you know, in my own What did you think way, when you died? What did you think was going to happen when you died? I thought I was going to heaven. Wow. I was going to witchcraft the people. And that was, you know what I was saying? My brother, I was saying, I'm helping God out. They need to be punished. That's what I was saying to myself. In my demonic ways, I was saying, I'm helping God out. They deserve to get punished through Talk witchcraft. About deception. So, uh, the deception that I had gone. I thought that the day I died, Jesus Christ was going to let me into heaven. Wow. Wow. Because the devil had me fooled and convinced that the witchcraft I was doing, I can justify because I was doing it to bad people. And they deserve the witchcraft and they deserve to be punished. And God was going to be very happy with me because I was the rod that God was using to destroy people's lives because they deserve it, because they earned it, because they were bad people. So you're working for Satan, but you're so twisted up, you think you're somehow doing God a favor and God's going to yeah. let you in heaven one day. Yes, exactly. Man, the deception is so strong in that. And God is going to deliver Lopez. someone tonight. You got Jennifer Lopez. She's a witch. You got Jennifer Lopez. She'll tell you she's going to heaven. You can ask Mark Anthony, he's a witch. He'll tell you he's going to heaven. You can ask Jay-Z and Beyonce, they'll tell you they're going to heaven. J and Beyonce started in church. She still thinks she's going to heaven. She got demon possessed on stage. She got people raising up a hand, fake worship, to worship Sasha, a demon. And people raising up their hands, singing to their music, being filled with the demon, being filled with the transfers of spirits. When you go to those concerts, transfers of spirits are happening. You're taking home a whole bucket full of demons. You're taking home that because as soon as you lift your, your hand, you're giving the devil legal rights. Same way we lift up our hands in church, we're giving God the rights to do whatever he wants in our life. They copycats. Mm, wow, man. So many good things you're saying here. Um, somebody asked, let me see. Um, how long did it take until you finally felt free from all the witchcraft you were in? And did you ever get delivered? Um, if you did, how was that process for you coming out of you know, my, my process? My process was very unique when I got delivered. I, my process, I got, I had a lot of rights to do. My deliverance came from reading. Um, actually, my deliverance came when I went to the baptism pool. I saw the wow. hands of God. 
to the baptism pool, really the hands of God himself went into the baptism pool and pulled out all my demonic ceremony from the age of eight to the age of 35. He, regained, he took them all out. And when I went to the baptism pool and then my, my inner healing, my inner healing delivering happened because I was a broken man because my father never loved me and I never had the love of a father. And I had a love, the only love I had was the devil for 25 years. He said, I'll become your dad. And, and I got healed from inner healing when I sat down in discipleship class as a young believer and they told me to read uh, Isaiah 53. And I wept like never wept in my whole life. Mm -hmm. I read Isaiah 53. And that, the, the fragmented man inside of me got healed that day and put together by Isaiah 53. Wow. Do you feel like the devil played on the fact that you didn't have a father as a weakness to draw you in to basically say, mm -hmm. I'll be your father, I'll be your, and kind of use that and capitalize that in your life and made you go down that road? Yeah, yeah. My father was a warlock. My father would, my father was a demonic warlock. My father would turn the living room on fire. He would, would take me and my brothers naked and throw us to the fire so we'd be purified. My father would, we would do cleansings in my house. We'd do ceremonies in my house. We'd do witchcraft parties in my house. We do bird, we do herb, bat, witchcraft, herb, witchcraft, baths, spiritual cleansings. We'll do that in the house. As the, when we're little, we will go through all those things. We see demons in the home. We see demons manifest. We see demons walk around the house. And uh, we'll see them as you see human pe people because my father would cater to that. And uh, But, you know, the, the emptiness of the hollow in my heart, knowing that I wanted to be loved by my dad. The only memory I got by my dad was he used to take us to the car wash and all the bubbles used to come out of the car wash. And, he never took us to play a baseball game. He never bought us a bike. He never uh, said, uh, love you. And he never wrapped his arms around you. He said, well, he was proud of me and my brothers. And so the devil one day showed up and said, hey, I'll be your daddy. And I give you the love that you need. And if you, you know, if, if, and when you, when you want to be loved, either Jesus, if you let Jesus Christ love you or the devil will show up and give you that kind of fit love. And the devil can never love you anyway because you made in the image of God. Come on. Wow. Wow. Powerful. I didn't know that about your dad. Wow. Um, yeah. Matt, that got shot in the face at the age of 33 for a woman that wasn't even his when he had a good wife home. So my father, I believe my father went to hell. Mm. Someone said, I've heard you say certain believers you couldn't attack when you were a warlock. Can you please explain more detail on how a real believer is protected from um, like witches and warlocks? Well, then you, I, the only believer that I can attack would be like a person like Kevin Zayd, a person like Isaiah. I can attack those people. I, I might be able to try to move you, but I wouldn't be able to do anything to you besides that. Because you, you, have, you had a pure, strong, and solid foundation with Jesus Christ. And uh, I can, you can't move someone from that foundation. Or you, can, you can't destroy that person from that foundation. That's what the Bible said. The devil comes to seek, to see who he can devour. Right? Mm -hmm. So Christians like yourself... Christians like yourself, I was not able to take dominion over you because you had you had such a divine connection with the with the Holy Spirit that I was not able to capitalize or control you or dominate you in the spirit realm because you had something that was so strong or people like Nikki Cruz, something so strong, people like a Day Walkers and something so strong. It's a deep rooted relationship with Christ that demons can mess with. Wow, really good. Um, someone said, this is kind of a follow-up question. Does there always have to be, again, guys, we had a thousand questions come in. I've narrowed them down just to categories f for the sake of, so if we don't answer your exact question, um, obviously we can't answer a thousand questions. So I put them into categories here, but this is a really good one here. Does there always have to be an open door for the enemy to attack you or can you just well, be attacked sometimes? Well, the, it, it, you, I mean, you can, you can be attacked sometime because it, you know, the, the attack, the attack that the devil wants from the attack is to try to see if he can fragment you from your relationship from God. But also the, what gives the devil the opportunity to attack you a lot easier is when you have the open door, the open door represents legal rights, right? If you're watching pornography, if you, if you, uh, you know, if you're giving your, the, that one eye monster in your house, the television more time than you're giving God, you know, the, those are avenues that the devil knows how to capitalize. He knows how to hypnotize you to the one eye monster. Oh, the stuff that you're watching, eye gate, mouth gate, ear gate, stuff that you're speaking. The, devil's have, the devil has a demon right now standing next to me, standing next to Isaiah, standing next to you, that he wants to have legal right over your negative words. Understand? He wants to create a contract over your negative words. That's what Proverbs 18, 21 says. Life and death speaks, comes out of your tongue. 
We need to speak life. We need to repent right away for the things that we say. Because the devil knows that he, there's avenues and gateways that he can, make, he can make his life easier to attack you than pose that he can attack you. Job was a righteous man. Look at the life of Job. He was a righteous man. He had no open doors. That's where the devil had to ask permission to attack him, bring the heads down. So I can attack him, right? But there's people like Saul. You look King Saul. He had open doors. And that's why the devil attacked him. Look at David when he committed murder and he committed adultery. He opened doors. The devil attacked him, took out his family. I mean, destroyed his family completely. You know, David's family suffered because of David's consequences, right? That's why sometimes as married people or, or family members, you, you can be doing stuff out there. I just want to give you something. You could be doing stuff out there, but you will have a ripple effect in your family, even though your wife or your husband don't know what's going on, but it will affect your family. The ripple effect will come into your house and it'll be like a, it'll be like a tsunami to destroy your family because you open the door out there, even though your wife or your husband don't know. But the devil knows, and he knows the devil's into taking out families. Wow, wow. You know, I was going to say, the Paul says when you put on the armor, it's so that you can stand after the battle. So I think as believers, we think Jesus has delivered us from the battle, but when really reality is Jesus has empowered us for the battle. So we, <laughs> we always want to escape. Like, I'm never going to yeah, be yeah. attacked. I'm not going to uh -huh. go through anything. But in reality, there are attacks that come, but God has given us power, weapons of warfare, yeah, yeah. so that after exactly. the battle, after the attack, we can still be standing. I used to believe that. I used to say, oh, there, you know, I, God, I can't be attacked. Nothing could attack me. And then God one day told me, what? What war have you ever heard of in history where you couldn't get attacked? Like everybody, mm -hmm. there's a certain level, but as you said, when you have that open door, it gives the devil legal permission to enter you, to influence you, to attack you, and to do all those other things. But at the end of the day, even if you're on fire, firm believer, the devil can try to come at you still. But again, we have armor now so that we can stand after the battle's over. So I know a lot of us have been taught in these soft, lukewarm churches where they're like there's no attack there's no warfare but the reality is you are in an army paul called timothy a soldier so that's your job description your job description as a christian is soldier and paul said don't get caught up in civilian and the church for so long john you know this has been teaching people how to live a civilian life focus on the civilian life and not the life of war not the soldier life so listen if you're a believer you're you're a soldier you're called to fight and so don't get mad when the battle heats up just jump in the fight use your weapons put on the full armor of god and go ahead and uh, cut the devil's neck right there all right here's Amen. a good one can you receive an evil spirit from someone laying hands on you who's a warlock or a witch? Did you ever lay hands on people to put spirits into them? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we can receive it. Because I, I know I, I was in Kodosaw, I think I was in uh, St. Croix one time, and there was a lady I met, you know, she she told me that she had a witch, a Jezebel witch, come up to her and gave her a hug and transfer something to her that paralyzed her ministry for five years. Wow. Destroy her ministry for five years. But you also have to understand that God allowed things to happen in our life. But also, we don't know the story behind the lady that her ministry was destroyed for five years. We don't know what kind of open door that she had or what, how she was operating in the things of the spirit, you know, that it caused, it caused her the situation to paralyze her, her ministry for five years. So I said to my, I said, I've been, I've been to places, you know, I've been to places that witches put witchcraft on money and they try to give me an offering. I know it's witchcraft money. I don't take it. I give it to the usher so go buy lunch. I, I have witches come up to me, uh, come up to my meeting, bought me colognes. I know there's witchcraft in there. Holy Spirit tells me. I got witches that try to lay hands on me and they tell me, hey, can we pray for you? I said, well, if you think today's a lucky day, you pray for me. I got the five four ministry. <laughs> Believe that. You put your hands on me, I'll be like, I'll be a Huckleberry. I'll be like Doc Holliday in Tombstone. You know, you're going to put no hands on me, you know, unless I know it's like Brother Isaiah can put hands on me. I know someone that's walking with Jesus and the Holy is holy. They can put hands on me. I'm cool with that. But if I don't know you, I don't know your resume, keep your hands in your pocket. Be, be a good day for you. That's good. That's good. I like that. Be careful who you're letting. That's kind of been my policy since I started. My uncle, and my who is my pastor as well, would always tell people, no, you're not. They'd say, oh, can we pray for him? My uncle's like, nope, you can't pray for him. Thanks. You know, you're not laying hands on him because you don't know what people are going to do. You don't know what mm -hmm. people's plans are. And there's a people undercover that are trying to stop what we're doing. So um, here's one question. This guy said, question from my wife. My wife gets panic attacks every time we drive on the freeway. If I drive more than five miles of distance, she gets panic attacks. She's had this for 25 years her friends used to practice witchcraft but my wife never did medically my wife is disabled 
do you de would you determine whether this is medical or this is spiritual? Spiritual. It's spiritual. It has. It's spiritual. Absolutely. She got a trauma spirit or whatever it's witchcraft. They're praying. Sometimes witchcraft practice witchcraft, and you hang out with witchcraft people. Things are gonna transfer to you. So we're gonna mm -hmm. when we pray tonight, we're gonna lift up in prayer. We're gonna believe God. She's gonna break that trauma devil, and she's gonna get on the highway. She's gonna not gonna go five miles. She's gonna go 30, 30 miles, fifty miles, sixty miles because God has not given her a spirit of fear. That's gonna be broken tonight in Jesus' name. Mm, so good. Here's one, and this one came a bunch of times. What is, in your opinion, Satan's biggest weakness or Satan's kingdom's biggest weakness? The blood of Jesus, man. Come on, come on. I like That's that. The blood of Jesus. I hit that devil with the blood of Jesus. I put the judgment of God. I smite with the blood of Jesus upon his head. They don't know what to do. I confuse their language. Let them dumb devils be attacking each other because I have the authority to do that and then, and then some. So good. Someone said, do you remember everything from when you were working for Satan or are some of your memory gone? I, I've so, Do you feel like some of your memory is gone from what you used to do? No, not at all. I, I know recipes. I can write recipes of demonic witchcraft. They're even the devil's right now. The devil worshipers won't, don't even have a clue at the recipes that I know. Because I had when I was in the demonic world, I was the third person in the planet. I had the satanic book with symbols in it. Only three people had it in the whole planet. Three people had it. I was the third person that had that book that was given. It was the handwritings of the devil himself, satanic symbols. And actually, the two people that gave it to me, they ripped the last page off. And I said, you ripped the last page off. It's the last page is missing. I said, no, that's the ace that you can use to kill us. And that's why we ripped it off. We don't trust you. And they knew I was going to kill them through witchcraft. So I can be number one. So wow. I was number three. And wow. that's... And to that book, I can do any satanic ancient symbols in that book and pull witchcraft from people. And if I tell you your funeral is going to be in 30 days, I promise you that in, people will be preparing your funeral in 30 days because you were going to die. That's the kind of, I remember all that stuff. I know it's like riding a bike. I won't forget. But I'll tell you one thing. I'd rather die home. To, I'd rather die tonight before I even light up a demonic candle in my life ever again. I'd rather go home with Jesus. Come on, man. Powerful. Um, someone said, John, when you were involved in witchcraft, what was your view? And this has been asked before, but it's a really good question. What was your view of the average church on the corner? What did you think about churches? Uh, the morgue. The morgue. Uh, there was more excitement me sleeping in the cemetery than the church in the corner. Mm. They had nothing going. They, they, I, wasn't even I wasn't even worried about them because they had nothing to fight with. So to me, it was like, it's like it was beating up a toddler. Now today we have a remnant that is armed and dangerous. Come that on. I thank God for that remnant that is armed and dangerous. That we don't talk about the devil. We confront it, and mm -hmm. we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't talk about how the devil has a game plan. The devil has a plot, but we got a game plan, and we know how to bring it to the devil. And the devil doesn't like people like this show. Look what happened earlier today. Look, look at, look what the devil tried to do today. Sabotage the, the frequency of the, the opportunity for, to come here to minister. Because the devil knows when me and Isaiah get together, hell cries for mercy. Come on. Come on. So good. Um, someone said this, and I want, to, I want to touch on this as well. They said, it seems you guys focus a lot on Satan and demons, but Jesus said, preach the gospel, not demonology. How do you reconcile that? Let me, let me start with this one real quick. Um, first of all, let me say <laughs> that's this. Probably, that's, probably, that's probably serving of the, that, that person talking <laughs> right now, he probably served the devil. Okay, let me say this. Um, the sad part is we we're so soft in the church. We preach such a watered down gospel that people don't even realize that the deliverance ministry of casting out demons is the ministry of Jesus. It's not a separate ministry. You can't disconnect them. They're the same ministry. So when we're ta talking about casting out demons, healing the sick, delivering people, we are talking about the ministry of Jesus Christ. And someone said, well, he said, preach the gospel. The gospel of the kingdom is deliverance. If you Google salvation, I tell people this all the time. Salvation does not mean pray a prayer and repeat like a parrot the sinner's prayer. Salvation means to be set free, to be delivered, to be rescued from harm, to be preserved. So literally salvation means deliverance. Mark chapter 1, Jesus started his entire ministry casting out demons. Mark 1 38 says he went from synagogue to synagogue casting out demons. Everywhere Jesus went, he threatened Satan's kingdom. Jesus talked more about Satan than anyone in the entire Bible. He confronted Satan more than anyone in the entire Bible. So my question back to you would be, why don't you ever talk about spiritual warfare or Satan or demons when you're calling yourself a Christian? 
as Christians, we are called to ass assault Satan's kingdom. Jesus said, I'm going to build a church and the gates of hell are not going to prevail against it. So deliverance should be normal in your Christian life. Casting out demons should be normal. Paul says, do not be ignorant of Satan's devices, lest he has an advantage over you. So we're not going to be ignorant. We're not going to be unaware. We expose, as the Bible says, the works of darkness. And again, the guy saying that, I could tell you don't watch any of our content because we're constantly preaching the gospel. We're constantly preaching repentance. I just preached three months straight of every verse in the book of Revelation. So again, you don't watch my stuff. You don't watch John's stuff. I jump on John Ramirez's stuff all the time. He's always preaching the gospel. He's always preaching revival. He's always preaching the blood of Jesus. He's always preaching salvation. Um, so, but I will say because of the lack of spiritual warfare teaching, the lack of deliverance in the church, God has called us as special forces to train the body of Christ. So don't, the eye doesn't say to the foot, we don't need you. The hand doesn't say to the mouth, we don't need you. We're a specific part of the body that are training special forces. And so for all those believers that aren't engaging or aren't involved, don't be a hater. Just realize we're not the same body part as you are. And this is absolutely Jesus's ministry from front to back. This is what Jesus did. Do you want to comment on that, John, as well? I'm getting all fired up here. Uh, you, you, I, I think I think you're getting that piñata a smacking. That's good enough for me because, they, like I said, they, they got Jesus did two things. He confronted demons and he confronted the religious leaders and he confronted the religious Pharisees of his day like we are today. Every time you and I get on the platform and we do God's work, there's always Pharisees that will show up and say, why are you talking about demons? Why are you talking about demons? We preach a, we preach a balanced gospel for Jesus Christ. We preach a balanced gospel. Jesus said, by these signs, they should follow. So we cast out demons. We preach the gospel. We get people to the kingdom. We get people saved. We get people set free. We get people baptized. We get people discipleship. And we make people armed and dangerous. But this this, this little most smiles right here, the little cupcake that came on, he don't know nothing. So you should just wrap yourself, go back to bed, and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you got me cracking up here. And I want to say too, like I was t preaching on this in North Carolina this last Sunday, Jesus preached the gospel. He cast out demons and he healed the sick. Those are the three main things that Jesus did. So if you're a Christian and you don't do any of those, what kind of Christian are you really? So it wasn't like mm -hmm. Jesus did 10 things and we're focusing on only one of them. Jesus did three main things on the earth in his ministry. We're talking like actual ministry and those are three things that we're constantly talking about. So I want you guys to realize though, this is a main part of the ministry of Jesus. It wasn't like a side thing or it wasn't a minor. We're not majoring on a minor. We're majoring on a major because casting out demons was a major ministry of Jesus. Again, I won't go into a whole teaching because we teach on this for hours and hours and hours on, but um, just, yeah, whoever asked that. Okay, here's a good one. Is sleep paralysis demonic? Science claims yes, it it's just your brain awake while your body is asleep. But is it Virtual really a warfare, demon? Baby spiritual warfare this the demons attack you at night because they want you to sleep but they don't want you to get rest amen mm -hmm. there's spiritual warfare in your mind there's spiritual warfare in your sleep i mean you're going to talk to a scientist he's an antichrist devil worshiper about something there's some scientific things that can be proven a lot of the stuff is spiritual warfare even when i got hit in january that my cataract came off even my special doctors, my good friends, special doctors, they said, this is a freak action. I said, no, this is spiritual warfare. They said, we never seen in medical history some cataract fall off your eye the way it did. So so, so there's a lot of things that the, the, doc, the great doctors out there, I know doctors, I'm, I pray for many doctors that are believers that had come to my meetings. I'm talking about special doctor from cancers and all kind of psychiatrists, psychology doctors. I come to my meeting. I pray for scientists, people that are believers that live in Kansas City, great friends of mine. They are teaching all over the world. They are very well known. If I say their name, you know who they are. I pray for them. They are great friends of mine. They believe in the spiritual. They believe in scientific things. But the bottom line, that kind of devil that don't let you sleep, don't let you rest, that devil ain't had nothing to do with no scientific method. That is demonic. And let me say this because I had a friend preach about how sleep paralysis is not demonic and it's just natural and he has it all the time. Let me say this. If it's not demonic, when you're having sleep paralysis, why is Jesus the only word you can't say? Because it's demonic. That's why. It's demonic. So if Amen. it was medical, you could have, you could say Jesus. But if you ever have sleep paralysis, which I've had it before, it's a demonic attack at night. The mm -hmm. only word you can't say is Jesus because those demons don't want you to say it. They're holding you down from saying it. So again, absolutely demonic and you, you got to rebuke it. All right. Here's uh, another one. Will you please explain what a monitoring spirit is? A monitoring spirit to me, a spirit that been, there is two ways of a monitoring spirit. Monitoring spirit is monitoring you, monitoring. You know, I, I, 
this is what I tell people, monitoring spirits, man, you got to be, you got to be very strategic. People ask me, do you have a prayer closet? I said, no, I don't. They say, oh, you don't pray, John? Oh my God. No, no, I pray. But my, my prayer closet is the world. Everywhere mm. I go, I pray. I don't have a prayer closet because these monitoring spirits, right? What they do, they monitor your game plan. Well, I get up at five o'clock every day. I pray at five o'clock. You, so that means, that means, that means your playbook is predictable. You see, mm. so these monitoring spirits, they monitor every assignment, every move you make, every plan you make, every strategy you make. They monitor every season you are in because they're trying to bring hindrance, delay, blockages, and distraction into your season. They monitor you. They study you. They're trying to find out what direction you're going. What are you doing? How's your prayer closet? How's your prayer life? That's why my prayer closet and my prayer life is so unpredictable that the devil can't keep up with it because you're not going to monitor me. I monitor you, but you ain't going to monitor me. Because my prayer life is so unpredictable, the demons can't go back and report about anything by John Ramirez because I keep it so unpredictable by the things that I do in the spirit, how I walk in the spirit, how I walk on God, how I read my Bible, how I don't read my Bible, how I fast, don't fast, how I do communion, don't do communion. Because the devil, I'm three steps ahead of the enemy because I'm not going to make my life predictable for the enemy to come in and do whatever he wants. Mm, that's really good. Someone said, someone said, should I be a part of a church that says they believe in deliverance, but they don't teach it or practice it? I've been on the worship team for three years. I've never seen a deliverance take place. Um, what do you think? I, well, I, should I, go, I go look me for delivering church. Th this, is the, this is the stuff I was saying earlier. Pastors will talk a good game about deliverance. We believe in it, but you're not practicing it. You're not mm. doing it. I can tell you I'm a karate expert, but if I can't kick in your head, then why, why, why should I say I'm a karate expert? You know, I mean, if my kicks is not going to work, you know, so why, why, why am I going to say I'm a karate expert? Why am I going to say I believe in deliverance, but, but, but my church ain't doing it for the three years? My church can't even cast out a mosquito devil. So how am, am I saying that I believe in deliverance when your church can't even cast out Mickey Mouse, uh, Donald Duck, Goofy? I mean, it, it, it's, it's like you, you talk a good talk, but what's the evidence that you do what you do. That's you have to be evident, right? You have to be evident. Jesus spoke, but Jesus had evidence. Jesus had a whole big resume of casting out devils. He had a resume. So what is your pastor's resume? What was the last time he cast out a devil? Every mm -hmm. Sunday he talks about it, but, 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 but meanwhile, I haven't, every Sunday, three years, I haven't seen the devil come out of my church. Wow, that's so good. So good. You couldn't say it better than that. I think too, a lot of pastors like, oh, I, they say they believe it. Listen, I've said this before. If you say you believe in miracles, but you don't pray for the sick, you don't believe in miracles. If you say you believe in deliverance, but you never cast out demons, you don't believe in deliverance. You have to prove what you believe. Paul says to show evidence that you're among those that God has called and chosen. Jesus said to strive to enter through the narrow gate or to work hard to prove. So we have to show evidence. We have to bear fruit. That's the parable. I believe it was in Luke. Um, uh, I now I can't now my mind just completely went blank was it 13 where Jesus talked about the fact that the fig tree didn't produce anything and so he wanted to cut it down because for three years it was taking up space and never producing anything and that's a lot of preachers a lot of leaders they're producing nothing they're just taking up space in the body of Christ and the Bible says that the the fig tree gets cut down if it doesn't produce God gives it one more year all right I'm gonna go a couple more here and then we're gonna pray for the chat um, I want to be respectful of your time as well let me see man we went over so many good ones here I got delivered but it feels unfinished how do I know if I still need some more deliverance yeah you, know, you, you gotta know about the you know either the deliverance people that's doing the deliverance for you or even or, or the Holy Spirit will tell you because there's people I could do deliverance for, but it could be like an onion, pinning, pinning layers of, mm. of the situation of the deliverance. Or it could be a situation you could be delivered, but now you got spiritual demonic residue. You have to clean up the residue. So depending on your condition, your situation, where you've been delivered from, and your relationship with the Lord, you know, so we have to deal with different aspects of your deliverance. You know, it, 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 is it generational or some doors that you open? How deep did you go that the door's been opened and you was afflicted? spiritually and now you got deliverance but you might need a second hand of deliverance you might need a third round of deliverance jesus brought someone out to from from uh the, the town he laid hands on him he was blind and the man said jesus lay he said what do you see he said man i see man's as trees right and then jesus laid hands on him again and then he was able to see right so that that's a form of deliverance right i mean this is jesus jesus could have just snapped the finger and it would have been done but god is showing us this there's a process there's instant deliverance, but there's a process. And you might have some demonic residue that still has, needs to be dealt with. And the people that are doing deliverance, they should recognize that and tell you and deal with it. 
That's good. I agree with everything you're saying. I think a lot of people get delivered and the person doing the deliverance, maybe for the sake of time, maybe the lack of experience, but everything didn't come out. And so there's no shame in multiple deliverances. I, I always say this, don't be ashamed if you need a second deliverance, a third deliverance, because if you do a five minute deliverance and you need like, you know, and you need at least like an hour's worth or you need more deliverance, then you could do five sessions for five minutes. And then you could do one session for an hour and that's way more than the other one. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't gauge it guys by how many sessions did I get? How many times did I get deliverance? I would gauge it by, was it thorough? How long was it? Did everything come out of me? Our goal is to get the demons out of you. So whether that takes a minute, I would prefer them all to take one minute. But the reality is if you do deliverance, you know that there's different ranks of demons. There's different levels of demons. Some are more wicked than others. Some are more stubborn than others. Everybody has a different personality. Demons weave their way into our personalities. And some people have unforgiveness. I mean, there's a thousand variables as to why deliverance could take long or you'd need multiple, but don't let people shame you by saying, oh, you already got delivered. You don't have any demons. It's like, I know pastors are always saying that, but my, my thing is like, who are we to tell you that you don't need deliverance? I will never tell someone, oh, you don't need any deliverance. Like if you think you need it, then let's pray and see if anything's there. Now, there are some people that have gotten delivered a million times. There's no demons and they're paranoid. I would also caution you, don't be paranoid thinking you always have a demon if you've been delivered like a hundred times. But I think it's a legitimate concern when people say, I think I need deliverance and pastors say, oh no, you don't. You just need to pray more. Like praying more doesn't get demons out. Casting them out gets them out. So I would Amen. say if, you, if you're getting told that, Go find someone else. We have a deliverance map. I have like what 1200 people all over the world casting out demons. Go find someone on there to get deliverance and don't be listening to people saying like, oh, you know, you're this, you're that. It's just your flesh. If you're hearing voices, if you have overwhelming desires, if things are dominating you, that's probably a demon and you need to get it cast out. Okay. Let me ask you one more question, John, and then we're going to pray for the people here. I really appreciate your time. I know we've been here for about an hour and a half. Um, can the devil know your thoughts? Can the devil read your mind? No, not at all. The devil can read your the devil can read your coming up and get up in the morning and going to bed at night. The devil can read your your predictable cycles, uh, your predictable patterns. The devil can read that, but the devil can't read your mind. They know only God can read your mind. God said, "I know your thoughts from afar." They mean before you thinking, God already know what you're thinking. The devil, the devil can't read your thoughts. So don't let the devil lie to you. Think he can read your thoughts or manipulate you to believe, make you believe that he can read your thoughts. He can't read your thoughts, and the devil can't. The devil can play your mind. He can torment your mind. But he cannot read your thoughts. Mm, that's so good. Man, what an awesome time. John, thank you so much for your time. I want you to pray over the chat. Let's pray some arsenal prayers. Let's pray some for those that need deliverance. There's almost 8,000 people watching right now, which is absolutely crazy. I think the last time I had you on, we had about 5,000. So we are making breakthrough. Tonight is a night of breakthrough. Incredible, incredible time. Um, again, every time I ask you to be on, you're like, let's do it. You're one of my favorite guests and people of all time. And you just always exposing, you're always just going and exposing the enemy. So I appreciate you. Why don't you, uh, uh, close us out in a prayer. We're going to pray mass deliverance over you guys, and then we'll we'll tell you guys where you could find our stuff and everything else like that. And man, and man, one thing I want to say real quick, you know, one thing about Isaiah and myself, you know, we don't love the crowd. We love the people. Mm. Pastors out there that love the crowd but hate the people. That's why we do what we do. We, we, we don't mind taking a few hits from the enemy to stand in the gap to fight the good fight because we are brother's keeper. And that's why what we do, we do. We're not trying to criticize. We're not trying to we're not trying to bash any pastors or leaders or anything, but the Bible says expo expose the deeds of darkness. And if the deeds of darkness are living in the church and the deceivers and the and the Simons of sorcerers are living in the church and preaching to try to preach the gospel, you know, or telling you, you know, come by the anointing. That was Simon the sorcerer. He wanted to buy the anointing. We need to expose the truth because you know what? As there at the end of the night, him and I, we have one responsibility. We don't want you to lose your salvation. Mm. We don't want you to lose your salvation. We don't want people to play with your salvation. We don't want people to play with your purpose or your destiny. So that's why we stand in the front line and fight the good fight with you. So you can live that life that God has for you. So if you got stronghold bondages, you have besetting sin in your life, repeat patterns and cycles of repeat. We don't want you to live that kind of Christian. We don't want you to be a mediocre Christian. We want you to be God's best. So we stand here. We take the blow. We get the emails from pastors and saying, why are you talking that way? Why are you saying this about us? You know what? If you have nothing to worry about, you don't have to be emailing me about nothing. Come on. Come on. You know, you should be doing your job. You know, you should be doing your job because doing for Jesus out of paycheck. It is mm. salvation to setting the captive free for the souls of men and the glory of God. That's how we do it. And that's why we do this. We do it because we want to make Jesus Christ proud. And we are brothers, sisters, keeper.
and that's why we stand the gap for you, and we don't we don't mind fighting the good fight with you in the battlefield, so you can live that life that God has for you. And I just want to pray right now, just to say that, because I know pastors are haters, and I know they're haters and they're manipulators, and I know that they just get upset because we expose the truth in the church at large. We're not saying there's good pastors out there, there's good leaders out there, there's good men of God out there, there's good women of God out there, but we're talking about those cronies, the agents of the devil, to try to manipulate the gospel, to bring something to you, to contaminate you, and make you lose your salvation. Because mm. whatever lukewarm church you sit in, whatever dead church, whatever morgue, whatever nursery home you're sitting in, you're not going to heaven. I, pr I promise you that. Because the condition of your spirit, man, the condition of your mind, your soul, and your spirit, it, it, it doesn't qualify to get to heaven. Because the bottom line is the crap that they're feeding you there, the spiritual crap they're feeding you there, okay? It's not building you up to be the man of God called you to be. And that's why you need to tune into shows like this and you need to tune into the truth because the truth will set you free and the truth will prepare you to heaven and the truth will get you in, and get you into heaven because God is waiting for, God has a remnant out there, a remnant of people that is doing the will of God. They're not doing their will. They're doing the will of God. And I'm, we're not doing us. We're doing Jesus. Amen. So we just want to mm -hmm. say that for the people out there that are listening. That's how much we love you. That's how much we want to honor you. That's how much we respect you and how much we care for you. We care for you. I care for you. My brother cares for you. I've seen his crowd. I've seen the people that come to his meetings. I don't know if people are going to show up. All the people ain't going to show up. And this guy, if he was, he was faking the funk, come on. no, they know he carried, he carried the glory. He carried God's presence with him. And that's why, he can, that's why the devil hates him so much and hates me. But we can live with that because we're going to do Jesus until he calls us back home. So, the Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we break. Right now, we bind the strawman against every believer right now that's listening. Right now, believers, you listen to the sound of our voice right now. Repent, renounce right now. Everything that's plaguing you, everything that's tormenting you, everything that has you in bondage, strong, every besetting sin. Right now, renounce it by name in the name of Jesus. Say, devil, listen to me right now. I'm not doing pornography. I'm not doing drugs anymore. Any demonic spirit of tormenting you in your mind. Any fear, devil, any fear, any sin sickness devil right now and infirmity devil every trauma devil right now for that young lady that she can't get in the car because she's paranoid we break those paranoid de devils in the name of jesus christ we have the authority right now to take over the airways in the name of jesus we have the authority to take the north the south the east and the west for everyone that's listening here domestically and international god is not bound by space and time devil you're a liar we bind the strongman over those regions of our brothers and sisters we choke those demons right now out of your place in the place right now. We get them out in the name of Jesus Christ. We command them to leave now. Got to go. You have no legal right. We burn your bangs and scroll your legal right. We break every demonic contract known and unknown in the name of Jesus right now. Every sickness, infirmity, oppression, depression. Right now, I'm forgiving the devil right now in the name of Jesus. Manifest and go. In the name of Jesus Christ right now. We command you to loose our brothers and sisters right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, you got to manifest and go in Jesus' name. We command every foul wicked spirit right now that's tormenting you. We put back the judgments of God upon those devils, those witches. We burn down altars right now with your name on it. We burn down demonic altars of every kind in the name of Jesus Christ. We put the judgments of God upon every devil that's tormenting you, that's trying to steal your purpose and your death and that religious devil. We bind those devils. We bind those under them lying spirits, those deceiving spirits, those cunning spirits, those wiles and schemes of the devil that's trying to come against you right now. We break those things right now, complete and full. We curse you to the root. Let the shepherd die in the name of Jesus Christ and release you now in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray the glory of God will fall upon you, in you and through you. Every void that you have, let it be filled by the Holy Spirit tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the God, let the Holy Spirit renew your mind, heart, spirit, and soul. Let him take you deeper for the things of God in the unmatchable name of Jesus Christ. We release the arsenals of God upon every demon right now. Right now, we release angels from Michael's quarter to come down and destroy every demonic witchcraft, works of the devil, dark side, every pattern, seconds of repeat, every gateway, open doors of every kind in your life. In Jesus' name, we shut them down in the name of Jesus Christ with the blood of Jesus Christ. And we put the judgment of God upon every demon. We cage them up and get them out of your neighborhood, get them out of your life, get them out of your marriage, your children, your family right now, your finances, your purpose, your destiny. Let them show up and die. And we pray the glory of God will rush upon you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Lord. What a powerful time. Incredible, guys. I want to challenge everybody to sow something into this ministry. Again, this was free. Every time I bring John on, I try to <laughs> sow into him and bless him, and he never lets me. He always sends it right back to the ministry. So please, tonight, I'm not asking John. I'm telling him I'm sending him something tonight. And if he tries to send it back, I'll just keep sending it back to him. So guys, please sow into something. Please make sure that you subscribe to John's channel. Follow him on Instagram. Follow him on Facebook. Get the Spiritual Warfare e-course. Third linked comment um, in the chat there. We're not done yet, guys, so stay on here. John, where else can they find you? What else do you got going on that you wanted to talk about? Yeah, they, I got, you know, they can, they, I'm, I'm going to open up my inner circle coming up in December again. Uh, this inner circle is my, 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 really my community. My, my, I call it my spiritual gangsters. I'm also doing a, a third, a third session of the third series e course called Spiritual Warfare on the Front Line. It's going to be out in, uh, in January. It's going to teach people how to attack the devil. Not wait for the devil to attack you. You're going to attack the devil. It's going to teach people how to use the arsenal of heaven to attack the devil. Not to let them sit there and say, I'm waiting on God. They'll stop saying that. Attack that devil right now in the name of Jesus. Stop saying, I'm waiting on God and you smell like toast. We, we're going to teach people how to fight back in this the e course, the third season. They can go for the e course book, Spiritual Warfare book on Spiritual Warfare Ops on my website. And uh, again, you know, I just want to bless people. And I got a book that just came out. It's called it's called Conquering Your Deliverance. We need to conquer stuff, people. You know, one thing I want to say real quick, there's people, you know, we fight the good fight. We win battles, but we don't conquer nothing. That same mm. devil come six months later to fight you again. You know how to, you need to know how to conquer stuff. But the Bible says we are more than conquerors, so, man. So I'm blessed, my brother. I love you so much, man. Love, love you, love man. Your and uh, one day when I grow up, I want to be like you. Come on, man. We're going to link up this next year. We're going to do some events together. Yeah, we'll some demons right, up. When I get to California, you owe, you owe me an In-N-Out burger. Let's go, man. Let's do it. I got you. All right, man. I'm going to text you after the broadcast. I'm right. going to send you something tonight. Love you. Appreciate you, man. Love you, too. God, God bless. bless. You. Take care. What an awesome, everybody sow something, guys. So, so, so something so that we can sow into him. Again, he tries not to take it every time, but we're going to make him this time because he just blessed us. What incredible numbers. So if you're new, we are going to read all the donations and we're going to hang out for a bit. If you want to stay, I would love for you to stay. There's the links to give right there. If you're not a monthly partner, pray about becoming one. You get 70 sermons, 25% off the merch store, all the past partners calls, all the future ones, which we have one coming up in two weeks. The links to partner are there. The QR code, if you scan that, that'll take you right to the website to give. Make sure that you type in whether you're giving one time or monthly if you scan the QR code. Don't accidentally do recurring and don't actually do one time if you want to do recurring. So thank you to all you monthly partners signing up, being a part. 7,800 tonight, guys. How crazy is this? I'm not, I don't ever want to get numb to it, how crazy that amount of people is. I appreciate every single one of you, those of you sowing and giving. If everybody gave $1, look at everybody gave $1, how crazy would that be? And how much we'll be able to bless him and just further the advancement of the kingdom of God. All the, all the links to give there are in chat. Zell is Isaiah Luke. If you didn't know, my middle name is Luke. Let me get some music going. Saldivaryahoo.com. PayPal is on the comments. And then also you can go to paypal.me slash Isaiah Saldivar. Everything's Isaiah Saldivar, but the Zell is Isaiah Luke Saldivar at Yahoo. And then you can also give on my website one time. If you are blessed tonight, we always say don't dine in Dash. If you go to Denny's, you pay for your meal. We're not charging you here. This is free. If you want to sew, you can. If you don't have the finances, it's okay because somebody else is going to sew for you. So again, don't feel obligated. Don't feel condemned that you're not giving. Yes, that is the bobblehead down in the corner. There you go. He's alive and well. He's sitting right down there on the corner by the chat. You can see him because we got an extra wide angle lens there. Let me change the lights here. We're going to start reading donations. Man, guys, my mind gets frazzled when stuff happens with the computer, and I cannot believe that happened. I was like, man, I'm, I thank God that we're able to get everyone back on because we had to go into a different event, and so I thought maybe everyone would be gone, but praise the Lord that everybody was still here and everyone was jumping back in. All right, let me put on the different lights here, get the music going, change it up a bit, and then we're going to read the donations. Incredible 7,800. I cannot believe it, guys. This is incredible what God is doing online. It's amazing. Thank you, Juan, for sewing. I'm going to read all of them right now. And then I'll hang out with the chat. If you want to hang out, you can. I'll talk to the chat after. If you have something you want to tell me, just stick around. I'm going to read these donations, and then I'm going to read the chat. Again, Venmo is at Isaiah Saldivar. All right, let's let some of those go through. And I want to bless John tonight, so please sew into the ministry so that I could sew into him because a bunch of what's coming in is going to be going to him tonight. So, 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 so. Let me make sure. Okay, that's going. I cannot believe that happened. That was so crazy that it just 
turned off. The Zell is Isaiah Luke Saldivar at yahoo.com. And the Zell is on screen, y'all. The Zell is right here on screen. All the giving stuff is on screen. The QR code will take you right to the website. If you scan that, if you're watching on your TV, you could scan it with your phone and that'll take you right there. All right. Thank you, Michelle Sinclair. Thank you, all the moderators, Alexandria, all the rest of you that are modding, that are posting the giving links, the Zell links. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are the best. All of our mods are amazing. They are just incredible. And for those of you that are like, oh man, he's asking for money. I, I can't believe that. Then guess what? Don't give, okay? You don't have to give. You can still be here. Many of you have been watching free for two years and we don't mind that. That's totally cool. All right, let me just get through here. Okay, I think enough have gone through where I could start reading them. All right, here we go, guys. I got the chat up here. I don't have cash up, unfortunately. Our account was frozen and they will not unfreeze it. They won't tell me why. They basically said you didn't break any rules, but we're not gonna unfreeze your account. So who knows what's going on there? Yes, I'm wearing my spiritual sniper shirt. You can get that on the merch store, revivallifestyleapparel.com. If you monthly partner, you'll get 25% off the merch store. But yep, spiritual snipers. That's a sick shirt right there. I had to show off the shirt, you know? Got to, got to plug the merch. Okay, here we go. Let's read these. Make sure you subscribe to John Ramirez and make sure you follow him on Facebook and all that good stuff. Again, thank you to everyone that's giving. Appreciate your guys' support. Wow, lots, lots of people giving tonight. Our, our statistics are about one to 3% of people that watch give. So a lot, a lot of you giving tonight. We appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. If you haven't liked the video, make sure you like it as well. Make sure you like the broadcast if you haven't. That does help us out tremendously. Man, I got to figure out... That, that's very frustrating, the computer. I hope that never happens again. There's really no way to fix it because I can't make it happen again. So we'll figure it out. I'm a nerd. I'll figure something out. All right, here we go. Natasha Ramsey. So thanks for all you do. Thank you, Natasha. Linda and Serafina. Thank you so much. So you know it's going to be straight fire when Isaiah brings on John Ramirez. Love what you both do for the kingdom of God. May God continue to bless you. Spiritual gangsters. Thank you, Linda. Emmanuel. Thank you. Akila Lair. Say God bless y'all. Thank you. JK. I got your prayer request. If you have a prayer request, I won't read it out loud, but thank you. A-Rod, thank you. Selden's Christ King. Say, may God keep using your ministry. God bless you. Whoa, what was that? My light just flashed and scared me. Anonymous, I continue the Lord's work. Raid Soul. It's an awesome stream tonight, bruh. I've been going through a lot and have been missing the streams. Love the new setup. God bless you and, and John. Thank you so much, um, Raid Soul. Thank you, bro. Jesus is King. Said, love you guys in Jesus' name. Thank you for the powerful arsenal to fight off the enemy through the Holy Spirit. Much love from Lakewood Church. Thank you, Jesus is King. Maxim says, so happy that John Ramirez was on tonight. Thank you, Isaiah. Thank you, Maxim. Yes, I heard your guys' request to have him on and we brought him on. He's He's awesome. Tammy B said, Jesus, Lord bless you. And John, thank you, Tammy B. Christina Davidson said, love you, my brother, and appreciate. Thank you, Christina, appreciate you. Bull Shark, thank you. The Davis, Jade, Don, and Jackie, thank you so much. We appreciate you guys. Davis family, you guys are legends. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Irene Nalazko, thank you. Deandra Williams, thank you. Chapman Nicole, thank you so much. Kim, thank you. Monica Jackson. Thank you, Lucas, Jeremy Barmore, Malika Roden. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Kanisha York said, so made it the last 20 minutes, but still powerful. We'll watch again once it's up. Thank you both. Thank you, Kanisha. The replay will be available right after. Let me refresh the count. I know there's not 7,800 of you. So let me refresh, see if I could get this right here. All right. Hey, guys, that's all part of being online is you got to roll with the issues. Oh, there we go. 5,300. That, that looks good there. Um, you got to roll with it. And I, it is what it is. The technical difficulties, it's all part of being online. Plenty of grace. And thank you, pastors. God bless you both. Naomi, thank you. Osvaldo Silva, thank you. Jason Mann, thank you. Clint and Tariano, thank you. Vanessa Badia said pepperonis. Okay, I like pepperonis. Thank you. Marion Monson said, thank you for teaching the truth of God. Marion, I know I said, I know I'm saying names wrong. I'm sorry. So thank you for teaching the truth of God and the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Marion. Mary Molinix said, for God's kingdom, keep up the good works. Thank you, Mary. Erica Gonzalez said, I cried and laughed. This broadcast so, so good. God bless. I was laughing too. John's, John's hilarious sometimes. Jacqueline Smith said, thank you both men of God. Prayer for healing for my husband and children. Thank you, Jack Jacqueline. Yvette Perez, thank you. Conrad and Don, thank you. He said, fantastic battle lines drawn. Mandy B, thank you. Kim, thank you. Angel Sanchez, thank you. Hills family, all of you anonymous. Appreciate you. Ivan Garcia said, God bless you. David Costa Sin, thank you. Donna Teodoro, thank you. Anonymous, I love learning about spiritual warfare. Alyssa Molina, thank you. SJ, thank you. DeQueen, DeQuin, so may the favor of Yahweh be with you in every situation. God bless. Thank you, DeQuin. 
Moises Saldana, thank you so much. Anonymous said, that was incredible. I felt my hands on fire during the prayer. Thank you, man of God, and thank you, Jesus. Ariana, thank you. Dustin, you're out. Thank you. Anonymous said, your podcast has opened up my eyes. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Anonymous. Guys, we've been having some explosive growth. All glory to God. It's just been crazy. We've been like just crazy numbers lately. All glory to God, man. Thank you guys for being a part, for liking, for sharing. Savannah said, thanks guys for advancing the kingdom. Jaylani said, absolute fire with John Ramirez. Happy to hear new questions. Very helpful. God bless y'all. Christian, thank you. Jessica Yavam, thank you. Taylor D. So thanks for all you do, Isaiah. I love you, brother. Thank you, Taylor. Anonymous, say God bless this beautiful ministry. Jessica Rodriguez, thank you. Again, guys, if you're not a monthly partner, pray about becoming one. It does help us out tremendously to continue on doing these live streams, posting content, and everything else we do. Audrey, thank you. Pablo Felix, says so powerful. Let's keep fighting the good fight. May God keep using y'all to expose the enemy and keep attacking um, him. God bless. Thank you so much. Rallis, thank you. Brenda Kiss, thank you so much. Cameron Shaw, thank you. Victoria Lynch, thank you. Say, God bless you. Thank you for all you do. Such amazing encouragement. Jennifer um, Maida, Maida, thank you. Gloria Gandara, thank you. Ken McCormick, say, hallelujah. I love you both, mighty men of God. God bless you and your families and your fire ministries. Thank you, Ken. Allison Joanne, thank you. Christopher Harris, said, for John Ramirez. Jerrica, said, just caught the end, but going to rewatch. Thank you so much. I got your prayer request. Latasha Robinson, thank you. Agnes, thank you. Grace Madrigal, Thank you so much. Lots of anonymous here. Praise Jesus forever. Said praise Jesus forever. Cindy, thank you. Aliza, Theo, thank you. Yolia, Mako, thank you so much. Humberto Flores, Mercedes Aragon, Denise Bernal, thank you. Anne Barnaby, said may God bless you guys. Isaiah Kamani, so much love. Thank you for letting yourself be a vessel for his message of the masses. Health to you, brother. Thank you, Isaiah. Gloria Aguilar, thank you. Ruth Ramos, Thank you so much. I got your prayer request. Yes, we didn't have a broadcast yesterday because I was recovering from the five services we did in North Carolina. It was a long trip, guys. Powerful trip, but it was a great time we had in North Carolina. Thank you to everyone that came out. Stephanie Lynn, I got your prayer request there. But my voice was gone yesterday and I needed I needed I needed a break. That's the bottom line. I was I was tired. Cloud T, thank you. Crystal D, thank you. Mary Saul, um, thank you so much. Felicia, thank you. Nadia, so thanks for Thank you for the deliverance. Thank you, Nadia. Hess Helm said, awesome. Thank you. May Father bless you beyond measure. Gilda Moreno. Jessica said, thank you, Isaiah and John Ramirez for the work. Melinda, thank you. Man, so many coming in tonight, guys. Thank you so much for all the love and support. Thank you all of you that are even giving a dollar. We appreciate you guys tremendously. I am. Thank you, Pastor Jose. Said, blessings from Nicaragua. Thank you, Pastor Jose. Stacy P, thank you. Lisa, Merciasa, Merciasa, Merciaca, thank you. Isaiah, thank you. All right, I'll change up the lights. I got you, I got you. You want something moving? I got you. There you go. That's a little moving, or hold on. Let's see. <laughs> you want the voice one? How about this one? Is that moving too much? Yeah, that's moving too fast, huh? I wish I could slow that down. I got you, I got you, hold on. How's that? That's cool. Okay, that moves when I talk. I like that. I like that. All right. Here we go. Praying Lion. I'm talking a lot, so that'll keep moving. Thank you, Praying Lion. Sue Rhodes said, awesome teaching. Josephina said, for the encouragement. That is that is shooting stars. I like it. You said, do shooting stars. You remember. This is shooting stars. Steven Caesar, thank you. Amanda Gwen, thank you. So, um, Sonia said, thank you for the wisdom. Thank you so much. Yolanda Hill said, I hope the arena is being preserved. Crusade with Isaiah, John Ramirez, Alexander Pagani, Pastor Vlad, Pastor Mike, no words. Yolanda, we talked about doing an arena event today. We want to do in 2022, a Demon Slayers arena event. So yes, we talked about that today. Lauren Fitzpatrick, thank you. Fitzpatrick. Emilio Palacios said, thank you for tonight, brothers. God bless you. Thank you, Emilio. Shayna Rodriguez, thank you. Say, can I deliver someone by myself? Yes, you can. Thank you. Maggie Mercado said, so thank you guys and John for exposing everything that some of us don't know about. God bless you guys and your families always. Thank you so much, Maggie. Esmeralda Dalgadio. Dalgadia. Dalgadio. So thanks for this powerful message. Always powerful when you bring John Ramirez on. May God continue to bless you both. Thank you, Esmeralda. Liz, thank you. Cody, thank you. So North Carolina was fire. God is so good. You're all amazing. God bless. Thank you, Cody. Kathy, it's an incredible live. Your obedience to the Lord is seriously amazing. Keep the fire going. And then I got your prayer request there. Anonymous said, tonight was powerful. Anointed content. And we're so blessed to have access to it. So grateful for the truth. Thank you for all the obedient sacrifice. Love you both. Thank you, Anonymous, for that very generous donation. Gabby Bravo. So, hi, Isaiah, love you when you get together. Question, if a person uh, with demonic tongues prays over your loved ones, can you dismantle that demonic assignment? Yes, you can. Yes. Jay Mesta, thank you. 
said, why did you have to say Denny's? I dined in Dash there once. God bless you and your family. No worries, Jay Mesta. <laughs> Appreciate you. Patty Cravada, thank you. Said, thank you, John and Isaiah. Michaela, said, thanks so much for tonight. I've been recently completely delivered. Um, do you have one main tip to maintain deliverance? Thank you so much. Search on my channel, Keeping Demons Out, and I give you tips on how to keep your deliverance, okay? Giselle, thank you. Cora Winslow, so thank you, John Maris, for the prayer. Confident hope. I was a Satan kid in the 90s, and ministry brings help. Cassidy, thank you so much. Stephen Gallagher, thank you. Jessica, Mimi, say God bless you abundantly, brother. Tanisha, say I pray to so more. Santiago, thank you. Jimmy Tran, said your first video, John Maris, changed my life. God showed me the truth. Thank you for tonight's broadcast. It was powerful. Thank you, Jimmy. Lillian Castillo, said thank you, God. Keep blessing. Thank you, Lillian. Yoreli, said thank you for the spiritual bread. Alicia, Say God bless you. Thank you, Tina. Demon Slayers Unite. Thank you, Tima, Tina. Terry, appreciate you. Maria Del Carmen. Thank you so much. Nancy Decker. Say God bless you and Johnny, your ministries. Janine, thank you. Jasenia, thank you. Charity. Said blessings to your ministry and John Marriage. Thank you, Charity. Antonio. Said Bronx brother. Thank you, Isaiah and John, our award lawyers. I grew up. I want to be like you. Thank you. Uh, I don't know how to read this name. Said Deliverance Map is not working. Really? It should be working. Maybe update your browser. Hold on, I'm gonna check it right now because it should be working. Hold on. Deliverance map. Let's see. I'm loading it right now to see. Oh, you know what? Is it not working? Let's see. What is going on here, guys? My website's not working either. Oh wait, okay, my website's working. Oh no, it's working. It's just going slow. It's going slow. Oh, now it's working fast. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's see, loading map. Yeah, the map's working for me. Yeah, the map's working fine. I'm not sure why. I'm using uh, Google Chrome, so maybe try Chrome. Should be working. The deliverance map is for those that need to get deliverance. They can find someone on the map to do deliverance on them. So people that need deliverance could go to our map and find someone that does deliverance to do deliverance on them. Yes. All right, it's working. Maybe try to update your browser, restart your computer. Anonymous, thank you. Enrique said, praise the Lord Jesus Christ for the chat today. It was on fire. The Holy Spirit was on here. Isaiah Saldivar would love to have, love my apostle Pagani be on here and ask for prayer. I've had Pagani on a bunch of times. He was on episode two of the whole podcast. He's a good friend of mine. I was with him this last weekend. Christina Gomez, thank you. Um, by Vitalis Fonseca, thank you. Jasmine Jones said, you convict me every day. Oh, do you mean like on the Q&A with me and John? Is that what you're saying? Jen, I got your prayer request. Thank you. Timothy Chu, thank you. Rudy and B. Perez, so blessings to you and John. Christine Ramirez, thank you. Kelly Roy, so tonight was fire. The devil's a liar. Warren and Donna, so thank you. I appreciate the sound teaching. Kesha Carlis Carlisle, so thank you both. All you do is sowing a seed. Ashley Riara, thank you. So can't wait for Miami. The time is now. Yes, we'll be in Miami, January 14th through the 16th. Miami, I'm going to post the event info soon, but don't miss that, guys. It's going to be great. All right, T, thank you. Alexis Adams, to so make God a peace soon crush Satan under your feet. Romans 16, 20. Love the verse. Love it. Cindy um, Lewis, thank you. Kenny Tyler, thank you, bro, for that um, generous donation. Laura Vivero, said, so thank you for preaching the truth of the gospel. Isaiah and John. Sylvia, thank you. Yasmin Rodriguez, thank you. Man, I'm pretty sure this is the most we've ever, donations we've ever had, like amount of people giving ever. This is incredible. Anonymous said, God bless you, Isaiah and John, tonight was fire. Keep preaching, sharing your testimony. Former witch, listen to one of your videos of you and John. She repented, threw away cult items, is now attending my church. Congrats, John, and your reason. Amazing. Come on, Anonymous. Said an ex-wit or a former witch watched John's video and threw away her stuff and is now going to their church. Diana, thank you. Priscilla Santana, thank you. Tanya Horton, thank you. Um, Tabita Perez, Victoria, thank you so much. Thanks, Isaiah, so much. Appreciate you a lot. God bless you immensely. Love from Europe. Thank you, Victoria. Felicia Rogan, thank you. Naomi, say God bless you. Thanks for being a bold warrior for Christ. Andrew Hanks, say God bless you, brothers. Gaida Gamino, um, said when my son was little, he could see the unseen. How can I get help? A lot of questions need help. God bless you all. I'm not sure what you mean by he could see in the unseen. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Are you talking about like he's seen demons? Maybe he needs a deliverance if he's seen demons, possibly. Let me do one more thing and then we're going to read the Venmo. Actually, no, we're not going to do that because that's going to sign me out of there. Okay, let's read the Venmo now. We're going to have to speed read this, guys, because we've been live for almost two hours. 
All right, here we go. I'm so grateful that we were able to recover from disconnecting. All right. Why is my Venmo like this? Oh no, is it? Do I have to click every comment? Did Venmo update? I think it did. Let's see. I just updated my Venmo today and now it looks like, hmm. Are these all people? Okay, never mind. I can see all the comments still. I was gonna say it looked like I couldn't see the. All right, we're gonna read through the Venmo speed read, guys, because there's a lot on Venmo. Thank you to everyone that is giving on Venmo. We appreciate you. But there is a lot on Venmo here and a lot of long messages. So why don't I do this? Um. All right, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna read the. Ah, uh, let's see. How are we gonna do this? I could either speed read or I could read just the names and then read the messages offline because I've already been live for two hours. I want to get some time in with the kids for about 30 minutes before they go to bed. So should I speed read it or read just the names and then read the comments on by myself after? All right, just names. Okay, I'm going to do just names and then I'm going to read all these comments after when I'm on my own, okay? Isabella Robertson, thank you. Daniel Miranda, thank you. Adam, um, oh wait, no, these are not, hold on, hold on. These are not just me. These are my whole feed. Did Venmo change their thing? Hold on, guys. It looks like the comments don't show up anymore. Only on the feed. That's so weird, so powerful tonight. Okay, so I'm gonna have to literally click every single person individually here. Yeah, Venmo changed their thing now. So they don't show all the comments anymore on the feed like they used to. Now I could see the name and I have to click every single name to see, to actually see. That's so lame. Cause if not, it's, it's everybody's transactions now. Okay, let me read the names guys. And then I'm gonna figure out if I could filter out on Venmo where it's people that just so sewed into me because right now it's like my all my friends list on venmo which all right i'm gonna read the names because that's all that comes up now anyways on venmo which is so weird and i'll read all the comments separately all right isabella robertson thank you adam thank you sue ace thank you hannon yesenia anthony garza yes he's kate creations thank you miguel cruz caroline mojica nick travis maria botello tyreek simpson rachel anderson michelle crawley thank you amy van hooser Sabrine Hajaj, thank you. Kimberly Winch, Gina Nunez, Veronica Gomez, thank you. Ruben Salerzano, Samantha Romo, thank you. Alina Mays, Cynthia Sereno, Christina Hermes, Tina Dugan, Timothy Norton, thank you guys so much. Um, Cecia, Priscilla Silva, Johnny Salazar, Tommy Crowley, Zachary Kramer, Seema Kavari, Natalie Sam, Ashley Morrow, thank you so much. Um, Egbigo, thank you so much. Crystal, Rebecca Morgan, Ave, Ochoa, April Covey, Leslie Madrid, Nancy Torres, Kyla, Juan, Fernando, Delgadillo, Christine, Yadon Ministries. Thank you, Christina. Christina, Yadon Ministries. Thank you. Um, Marsha Leard, thank you so much. Irma Serrano, thank you so much. Laura Garcia, Shelly Jada. Lauren Gandafo, thank you so much. Tanya Cardwell, Destiny Esparza, Tiana Drakes, Alexis Benedict, Shireen Abraham, thank you. Melinda Torres, Elise Trooper, Tropper, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amanda Bruckner, Tara Rust, Nestor Palacios, thank you, bro. Sean Kelly, thank you. Crystal Smith, Joriel Taylor, Pierrette, um, Revangel, thank you. Brad Henry, Valentine. Adriana, thank you. Rick Naranjo, Virginia Delator, Sonia Bartol, Tekka Weber, Alicia, thank you. Alexandra Rojas, thank you. Isaac uh, McCutcheon, thank you. Brad Whitmer, Dehean, Cynthia Bird, Marielle Angel, thank you, thank you, thank you. Tamar Munoz, uh, Brianna Waser, thank you. Roxana, Pamela, thank you. Amy, Anna, Brittany, April, Hosanna Winkler, Eddie Tactall, Susie, thank you. Joy Rogers, Adriana, Ivan Velez, thank you so much. Danielle Larks, Crystal Botger, Haley Brazil, Patricia Wright, Michelle Crawley, Ryan Doherty, thank you, bro. Kate um, Brettonfield, thank you. 
Lachelle Clark, Rachel Sepulveda. Thank you, Morgan Robinson. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I do, I know you guys said I don't have to read them, but I like to read the names. Thank everybody personally. And then also when I meet people, I could, I could put the name to the people. So thank you guys so much. All right. Let's see. Carlos Rodriguez, thank you so much. Mabel, so it's always great to see you both. Thank you, Mabel. Jojo, so blessed tonight. Thank you for being on Big Brother John. Thank you so much. Um, Tatiana, thank you. So things I can fill the dark spirits during. How do I fight them? Plead the blood of Jesus. Put the audio Bible on as you sleep as well. Anonymous, I'd love the idea of all you collabing. God bless you. Mariana Sol Solano, thank you so much. Marcy, Marcia Robert said, keep teaching us, keep awake. Thank you, Jesus. Said, join in unity. Um, Akela, thank you. Okay. All right, guys, let me read a couple comments here and we're going to jump off because we have been live for two hours now. All right, let me read these. Give me one second here. Okay, let me read the comments. I'm reading the comments now. We love you, bro, from the DMV. We love, I love you too, Lonzo. Thank you. Did you receive essential oils package? No, I haven't, but I haven't checked my PO box. I'm going to check it on Friday. Bobblehead, he's right here. He's alive and well. He's been recovered. He's alive and well. He's sitting right here in view. Look, you can see him at all times. He's right down here. Bottom, you can see him there. He's alive and well. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know who Montel Jordan is. So I wouldn't be able to tell you my thoughts. All right, guys, I'm reading the comments here. I want to go to the U.S. How is it like? Oh, it's cool. I've only been to the Philippines and Canada other than the U.S., so, I don't fully know, you know what I mean? I don't fully know the difference as a lot of places. Do you like Boba Tea? Yes, I do. Discord. Oh, man, I got to get the Discord going soon. Again, I've been traveling the last three weeks, guys. It's a major sacrifice to travel now because it throws off all of my stuff here for the stream. So, it's in my mind, guys. It's in my mind. Do you watch Kenneth Copeland? No. Who do you think is the Antichrist? I have no idea. Mm -mm -mm. Boba tea is great. Did you get my Venmo? I'm sure I did. I'm sure I did, Yolanda. I did, Yolanda. I read your name out. Yolanda Driggs. Thank you. What's your favorite kind of bubble tea? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I haven't had it in a while. Isaiah, do you know how to cook? No, I don't. I know how to boil water. That's about it. Make box mac and cheese. Mm -mm. Love you, Isaiah. Thank you. I love you too. Love you all. I'm, I'm blown away, guys. I'm humbled by the numbers, by the growth. That the, it's like we've been growing, and I always think that we're never going to be able to, like, we're going to plateau, and it just skyrockets every time I think that. So I'm honored. I'm humbled. I'm grateful. Trust me, every time I get off this broadcast, I say, Lord, I give you all the glory, all the praise, all the crowns I throw to you. I don't take any glory for myself. So it's all about it's all about Christ, for sure. It's all about God. And I just, I'm grateful, and I'm humbled, and I'm honored that you guys are all here. And the support is amazing. Anne's box mac and cheese is the best. Yeah, it is good. I like the spiral craft mac and cheese. That is the best. Spiral craft mac and cheese. Telling you, it'll change your life. 20K next time. Let's go. I'm down. My mom's still laughing at your reverse mohawk. Me too. That was hilarious. Why do you believe in preacher rapture? I have multiple videos on why I believe it. Multiple videos on my channel. Just type in preacher rapture and you'll find my videos on why I believe it. Craft Deluxe? I haven't had that one. Mm -mm -mm. Have you seen Maddie Nottage? No, I haven't. Congrats on 260,000 subs. Thank you. We are on a wave right now on YouTube, guys. We've gained like 1,000 to 2,000 subs a day for like the last, I don't know how long, 10 days. We're on, we're on our way to 300,000. It's just crazy. Literally just can't comprehend it. No Canada dates as of right now. How do you feel about the Catholic Church using Mary to intercede? I don't pray to Mary. I never would. I think it's wrong. Mm -mm -mm. Bro, I'll bring back to uh, bring some to you to church at some point, dude. I love boba. Boba tea is the best. Thanks, Justice. I have three cats. Those are all the followers I need, right? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't listen to Justin Bieber's music. For sure not. Uh, Kanye West, new album, I haven't listened to it, so I wouldn't know. But he did an interview recently, and he was, like, cussing and saying all this crazy stuff about 
some stuff. So I wouldn't be listening to Kanye West personally right now. So I think he's working out his salvation. What's your ethnicity? Half Mexican, half Italian. Okay, I'll look up Maddie. Isaiah, one of your little girls looks like a mini you. Yes, she does. When's the brown color for merch coming back? I'm not sure. I don't stock it. It's print on demand, so I'm not sure. Maiden name Saldivar. That's awesome. Guys, I love you so much. I appreciate you. I'm humbled that you guys are on here. What an incredible, incredible night tonight. Thank you, T-Dog. So I'm glad I was showing your channel. I've learned a lot from your preaching. Been watching it for a year now. Thank you, T-Dog. Thank you, Troy. I got your prayer request. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. I'll be live Friday night with Zoom Deliverance. I'll have, um, actually, all you still on here, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, we will have a premiere of a Q&A me and Pagani did live. Uh, per, or, uh, Q and A, me and him did at the conference, and then on Thursday, so that's tomorrow night premiere, six o'clock. Thursday night, six o'clock, will be a sermon I preached Sunday at the conference. That's not on my channel yet. And then Friday, Zoom deliverance. Saturday and Sunday, new videos. Okay, so be excited tomorrow night, at six premiere. Get in the premiere. I'll be in the chat. It's gonna be great. The Q and A was powerful. Don't miss that. And then also Thursday night, six o'clock premiere will be a full a full message, a full sermon, a new message. You don't want to miss that on, that I preached on Sunday. So you guys got a lot of content coming up this week. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for all you monthly partners. If you're not a monthly partner, pray about becoming one. We do appreciate you guys. I will see you guys Friday night, but I'll also be in the premieres the next two nights. All right? Love you guys. There you go. I'll be in Stockton November 28th. Stockton, California, four services, November 28th. I'll have the info probably posted tomorrow or the next day. Love you guys. I will see you Friday night. God bless. Bye. Good night. Going to hang out with my kids. Love you guys. Love you, love you, love you. Bye, bye, bye. Good night, guys. Love you. Good night. You guys are the best.